Seven months after Staten Island opened its eyes in the wake of Hurricane Sandy, residents are still sifting through the pieces. Homelessness is pervasive as storm victims continue to seek shelter with friends and relatives or in hotels with the constant threat of eviction. On the eve of hurricane season 2013, New Yorkers want answers. What is being done to reinforce our shorelines? Are homeowners receiving the insurance settlements they deserve to repair their homes? I set out to get the real story. But once we heard about Bigot Waters, we, you know, my husband didn't put up the curtains over here, or it's anything there. <laughs> you stop. Because During my outreach efforts, a Midland Beach resident named Joanna Tierno reached out to share her story. Joanna is immunocompromised with a rare disorder called hypogamma globulinemia, which means she cannot produce antibodies on her own. She relies on weekly doses of immune globulin to fight even minor infections. Okay, so what happened back in October when Hurricane Sandy hit your house? This is a photo of what everything looked like the next day when we came back. One block over Midland Avenue was still underwater. There's a lot of things holding us back from rebuilding and moving on in our lives. So in some ways, I feel like there hasn't been that much progress, especially for us here in Midland Beach. Um, currently, all of our other beaches are getting sand dunes, except for Midland Beach, and we happen to be where the most deaths occurred. So if one mile from us qualified and one mile on the other side qualified, it doesn't make sense to leave us out. The cost is really minimal. Um, for some of the, the, the geotextile bags, you know, even a high, even to do a temporary seawall is under $50 a foot. Tierno is unable to work due to her illness, so she donates much of her time to community activism, and she has created a petition calling for the construction of a seawall on Staten Island. So far, she has collected over 5,000 signatures. When you look at the devastation and damage that was here, to not protect us is just completely reckless. And it's going to compromise the beaches who are getting protected. Because if we're open, the water's going to come in, and it's going to float outward to the other beaches. But most of my neighbors stayed 24 hours a day, I mean, even through you know, the snow and, and freezing temperatures with, with absolutely nothing, with no heat, no utilities at all. I don't know one person that said, thank God I had insurance. Alex Dabrowski is the head of the Crescent Beach Buyout Committee. Well, there are two types of insurance premiums. There's uh, homeowner's insurance, which specifically excludes water damage. So home insurance will not be of any use here. What really matters is flood insurance. The problem is that the amounts they typically pay out are nowhere near the reality or the real cost of actually restoring and rebuilding a home. And the experience has not been a good one because the flood insurance policy doesn't pay for all the damage. It actually pays for specifically defined covered categories of damage. Specific categories of damage not covered by flood insurance can be substantial. For example, any damage above the water line is typically not covered, even if it results from structural weakness from the flooding. If your whole house is trashed, well, they only cover specific aspects of it that are directly attributable to the flooding uh, and to the, the flood surge and the storm damage. Our home sustained six feet worth of flooding. Uh, our experience was that uh, our street became uninhabitable we had uh, probably 40, 50, 60 houses that were flooded. After being displaced from his home and neighborhood, Dubrovsky witnessed the devastation firsthand and decided to lead an organized effort to encourage government buyouts of land in his neighborhood. Under the buyout program, homes in high-risk zones can apply to have FEMA buy out their properties to reserve the land for open space. So far, Oakwood Beach is the only region in Staten Island approved for buyouts. I am one of 90 homeowners in what is called the Crescent Beach Buyout Committee. It's a community, largely Great Kills, Crescent Beach, uh, Eltingville area. All of, us, all of our homes have been damaged by Sandy and are located in the floodplain. And these homeowners, for whatever reasons, be it financial, psychological, emotional, have decided to apply for the voluntary New York State Buyout Program. The banks are going to get hurt. You know, they're, they're taking a strong line with a lot of people. Um, but, you know, these people, their resiliency is just going to be so strong. They will walk from their homes, and I've, they've told me this, so I know it's going to happen. Sal Chris Qualo is a mortgage loan officer with Real Estate Mortgage Network in Staten Island. During the crisis caused by Sandy, Chris Qualo took off from work for two and a half months to volunteer with recovery efforts. Well, after the hurricane hit uh, the following morning, we went out 
and we saw the devastation. We had no idea that it was as bad as it actually was. Um, we saw people struggling, you know, with furniture and just there was search and rescue teams out there. And then we just started helping people, families. We were going house to house. Uh, everybody needed help in one way or another. I was registered for the marathon. My group came together and came to Staten Island and also helped with the effort. Uh, these people have nowhere to go. You know, they're going to probably just not pay their mortgage, walk away from their home and kill property values in their areas. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that shakes out. But everything's still up in the air, even building codes, uh, everything. Uh, these people pay insurance so they're insured if something happens to their home. And FEMA is supposed to be like gap insurance for them. Uh, but it's either wind or it's water. And now with the Bigot Waters Flood Act, you know, we're being told that you have to come up with money to elevate to a new code. Introduced in June of 2012 in response to fiscal issues from Hurricane Katrina, the Bigot Waters Flood Insurance Reform Act allows premium rates to increase by a whopping 20% annually. It also allows for deductibles. Tierno says this bill is highly detrimental to homeowners in Staten Island, as it will cause flood insurance rates to skyrocket. You're going to have to pay super high flood insurance rates, as high as $9,000 a year, which is about $800 a month, or in some places as much as $30,000 a year. And this is not what anybody bargained for when they bought their house. FEMA's flood zone maps are key to understanding who will qualify for buyouts and how flood insurance rates will change. Many, actually 62% of us, are in flood zone V currently, which means as long as they sustain substantial damage to their home and they remain in flood zone V, they have a shot at being bought out by New York State. The issue that's going to be happening is that many people are going to be reclassified from zone V to zone A. That will lower the flood insurance premium, say, from $27,000 a year to about $9,000, which is good, and will also lessen their elevation requirements by a foot or two from uh, what I've been hearing. So that's a good thing. On the other hand, people are still going to be required to elevate their houses, and they will have to pay a king's ransom if they fail to do so. And there are, the, there are tremendous problematic issues of how do you sell a house when the next buyer has to pay $27,000 or even $9,000. So it puts everybody in limbo where they're afraid to do anything to their homes. But there's a lot of people who still aren't even rebuilt and um, we're vulnerable to another storm. People think, oh, you guys in Staten Island just want taxpayers' money for a buyout uh, and that's all you care about. Well, I should tell you that in, in every case, um, there's been ambivalence expressed by people who are writing these little sandy stories for our binder. They have uh, lost a connection to their neighbors, to their neighborhood, to their way of life. They will certainly benefit from having the money to relocate somewhere else, but money doesn't solve everything. I hear the stories. Their stories are of agony and fear and anxiety and hopelessness. Many of them have small children, and they're terrified about what they can do to protect them, how they can protect them. We've had nervous breakdowns. We've had heart attacks. I'm concerned that hopeless and despairing people will do, will do harm to themselves. What are some of the policy changes that need to be made? Currently, I think there's too much red tape, and I don't think that they're funneling the money quick enough and okaying everything quick enough. Um, it's not hard to see. Definitely we need to repeal or replace the, the Big Orders Flood Act. She also states that the biggest mistake FEMA made was not providing trailers for people whose homes were uninhabitable. Even if you have mild to moderate damage, it's a tremendous amount of work to come back from a hurricane like this. Um, so that was a huge mistake that we weren't given FEMA trailers. And I'm awaiting to hear um, from Army Corps of Engineers. I know that they're going to be presenting their long-term plans for Staten Island soon. In 1995, the Army Corps of Engineers laid a blueprint for shoreline reinforcement on Staten Island's South Shore. The plan would implement a combination of dunes, levees, seawalls, and sediment fill. The Army Corps has experienced difficulty getting the plan funded and approved. Anthony Lecciardello, the co-owner of real estate SINY.com, has also created his own plan based on Army Corps research. So I understand that before you started this company, you actually talked with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers about shoreline reinforcement, and then you drafted a report based on what you learned with them. So tell me more about that. We learned that the Staten Island's coastline was at severe risk. It was a report done. Um, it was based on a few um, meetings with the Army Corps of Engineers. One of the things was, was looking at specific concerns of various community groups. One of them was in Oakwood. I have, I have a copy of the report. And 
it basically highlights the need for a reinforced concrete barrier to be placed from just about the Varizano Narrows all the way down to Tottenville. And while this may not have been the most aesthetically pleasing thing, and it was a concern about the, the long-term impacts uh, if it wasn't done, but the aesthetic impacts were something that the Army Corps felt may, may be an issue upon learning about some of the plans. It was really apparent that um, there was a plan ready to be put into place problem was it was never implemented. There should be some level of accountability for why we've gotten to this point and why lives were lost as a result of it. Fully knowing that this was, this information was readily available prior to the storm. Yeah, everybody has a voice and together as a group um, we have a larger voice. So write your congressman, you know, write, write, write the mayor, write the borough president of Staten Island, you know, get in touch with anyone you can. Um, and you know, just try to make some noise to help you know our fellow neighbors. If people still are, are displaced, there are resources out there. They just a lot of these people don't know where, how to get those resources. If you are a victim, they're out there. Eight years after Hurricane Katrina swamped the New Orleans area, many storm victims are still scratching their heads. It remains to be seen whether any place in the United States will ever be truly prepared for a hurricane. But it seems the best advice is to remain informed about current policy expect the unexpected, and never give up hope. Hannah J., realestatesiny.com.